Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the horror mystery films from 2023, titled Baghead. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie opens in an old pub in Berlin, with a strange hole in the wall, owned by an elderly man named Owen. One stormy night, a guy named Neil arrives at the pub and insists on seeing the woman in the basement. But Owen vehemently refuses, saying he won't find any peace through that door, only pain and suffering. Neil then offers him 2,000 euros, and explains that he just wants to say goodbye to his late wife, but Owen is firm in his decision, and tells him not to return here again. After Neil departs, Owen creates a video message for the future owner of this place. He reveals that the property comes with a special resident called Baghead, who lives in the basement and is very dangerous. He asserts that whoever signs the deed for this property will become her guardian. Baghead will do everything possible to escape and venture into the world, but it's up to the guardian to prevent this. The owner cannot stay away from the house, or else death and illness will follow. He claims that he will try to end Baghead's curse tonight, but he isn't sure if he will survive. After finishing the recording, Owen goes to the basement, where we see a deranged and monstrous woman, who is tied up to her chair. He then tries to burn the whole place down, hoping to end the curse once and for all. Unfortunately, this doesn't work, and he ends up burning to death, while Baghead remains very much alive. The scene then shifts to London, where we see a girl named Iris, and her best friend, Katie. Iris is struggling financially, she was recently evicted for not paying rent, and now she is searching for a place to stay. Just then, she receives a call from a solicitor. He informs her about her dad's death, and asks her to come as soon as possible. The next day, Iris flies to Berlin, and is horrified to see her father's burnt, lifeless body. She turns out to be Owen's daughter, who died at the beginning, but they haven't seen each other for a long time. The solicitor reveals that she has inherited a property from her father, and Iris didn't expect her old man to leave something to her. She doesn't even know her dad owns an old pub, and the solicitor gives her a tour of the place. He explains that its various facilities have deteriorated, and it requires a lot of money for its restoration. Thus, he will find a buyer and arrange to sell it as soon as possible. However, Iris tells him that she doesn't want to make that decision yet and asks for some time. She decides to stay the night at the place as she's homeless, and although the solicitor doesn't seem pleased with the idea, he can't refuse her. That evening, Iris calls Katie, and reveals that her father abandoned her many years ago, so she doesn't feel sad at all. Katie insists that she should not be alone during this difficult time, and promises to fly to Berlin soon. Around midnight, Katie is fast asleep when she is startled awake by an alarm clock noise coming from the basement. Curious, she gets out of bed, but sees nobody's around. After looking around for a while, she eventually arrives at the basement door. There are some spells written on the door, but she can't go inside because she doesn't have the keys yet. And then suddenly, she senses someone's presence in her house, and goes to check. It turns out to be Neil, and this scares her immensely. Neil clarifies that he is not here to hurt her, and he just wants to meet the woman in the basement. Iris is confused and claims that there is no one here, but he claims that there's a woman in her basement, he needs to see his wife downstairs. Neil offers her 4,000 euros, and even promises to give her more money if she lets him into the basement. Seeing the large amount of cash, Irish accepts it, as it could help her a lot in this dire situation. She tells Neil that she doesn't have the basement key right now, but asks him to come again tomorrow. The following morning, Iris meets with the solicitor, and expresses her desire to live in her dad's old place instead of selling it. This disappoints the solicitor but he doesn't try to change her mind. He gives her an old-looking deed paper, which she signs to become the owner of the place. He also hands her the keys, and a cassette containing instructions that Owen left for the new owner. That evening, Katie arrives at the house. Iris then talks about Neil, who gave her 4,000 euros and told her that someone lives in her basement. Shocked, Katie says that if it's true, it could be dangerous to live here, but Iris asserts they can earn good money from this, as she bets many people paid her dad just to go down there and have a bit of a scare. A while later, Neil shows up, and the three of them head toward the basement. 
the room is very dark, and here they find two chairs in the middle of the room. However, Neil's attention is drawn to a big gap on the wall, and he calls someone to come out. The girls do not believe him and start talking shit. But then all of a sudden, they see Baghead walk toward them. This creature has a bag covering her head, and she looks very deranged. Baghead does not follow Neil's commands, and approaches Iris. But surprisingly, when Iris asks her to stay back, she obeys her commands, and Iris orders her to sit on the chair. Following this, Neil sits in front of her, he gives her his late wife Sarah's ring, and Baghead put it inside her mouth. Neil has never done this before, and he proceeds to strap her to the chair, before she lets out a horrifying scream. Her hands slowly transform, and Neil removes the bag off of her head, only to find his mother, who passed away 20 years ago. Neil doesn't understand why his mom appeared because he wanted to see Sarah. So, he asks his mother why she took her life back then, but the latter gives him very vague answers. After about two minutes, her eyes turn black, and she tells Neil that she never wanted children and that's why she hated him. But now, she wants to give him a kiss. All of a sudden, she disappears from the chair, and then shows up. She pins him to the ground and releases water from her mouth. Here Iris commands her to stop, and she puts the bag again on her head. Once again, Baghead obeys her, she returns Sarah's ring, before returning to the big hole in the wall. After they exit the basement, Neil realizes that his mother appeared because the ring originally belonged to her, before he gave it to Sarah. He also reveals that he forgot to tell them that the conversation with a deceased person cannot exceed two minutes. Because after that, Baghead will take control of the spirit and become aggressive. Despite the failed attempt, Neil is adamant on meeting Sarah because he misses her a lot. Iris refuses because she has already seen enough, but Neil hands her the money, and says he only wanted to say goodbye to his wife. He also gives her his address, and asks her to contact him in case she changes her mind. After he leaves, Katie and Iris watch the video instructions left by Owen for the new owner. The old man reveals that Baghead listens to and follows only the Guardian's command, whose name is on the property deed. She has the power to bring back the dead, anyone who wishes to speak with their dead relatives must only talk for two minutes, otherwise, Baghead may start manipulating their mind and become hostile. He then admits that the more one uses Baghead, the more powerful she becomes, so it's better to not use her at all or she'll crawl inside their head, and even if they try to leave, she'll bring them back there, with her only goal being to get out of the basement. Upon learning all of this, Iris finally realizes why her dad suddenly left so many years ago. It was because he wanted to keep his family safe from the monster, but the solicitor ended up contacting her and bringing her to the old pub. Meanwhile, a terrified Katie suggests that they should run away from the place, but Iris doesn't want to leave because she doesn't even have a place to live. She says that Neil is very rich, and is willing to pay whatever he has, and if they let him talk to Sarah for one last time, they will have enough money to start their own lives. Katie doesn't like the idea, but she reluctantly decides to stay for the sake of her friend. The following morning, Iris returns to the basement and announces that she is the new owner of the place. She writes do not cross on the stairs to keep Baghead from leaving. Then, she goes to meet Neil to ask him to come back. Meanwhile, Katie uses a wine barrel to block the basement door. She then tries to leave, but suddenly, a picture frame falls to the ground. It features two unknown men standing casually. When Katie looks at the back of the picture, she notices that it was taken in 1972, and one of the men's names is Otto. Surprisingly, the other one is the solicitor who arranged for Iris to sign the deed. Katie finds out that Otto used to be the owner of this place before Owen. On the internet, she discovers that Otto eventually ended up taking his own life after experiencing a family tragedy. And then all of a sudden. She sees Otto, but then realizes that the man is gone. Elsewhere, Neil shares with Iris that he deeply loved his late wife, Sarah, who passed away in a car accident. Her death left him devastated, so he began attending a grief counseling group. It was there that he learned about Owen, who could supposedly connect them with the deceased for a fee of 2,000 euros. In the evening, Neil, Katie and Iris return to the basement. 
Neil gives Baghead an item that belonged to his wife Sarah, and Iris sets up a two-minute timer. The monster immediately transforms into Sarah, and the last thing his wife remembers is the moment when she was about to get into an accident. However, it soon becomes clear that he didn't do all this just to say goodbye. He suddenly asks who she was seeing, and asks whom she was having an affair with before she died, but Sarah denies such accusations. Just then, the timer goes off, and Baghead takes control of the spirit, claiming there was no other man, and she just couldn't stand the thought of being with him any longer. At this moment, the basement suddenly changes into the scene of Sarah's tragic accident. Iris sees Sarah crying in the corner, and cautiously approaches her. But then, Sarah turns into a vicious creature. The creature pins her to the ground, and reveals that Iris herself is a prisoner of this place, before returning into the hole. After things calm down, Neil says he wants to talk to Sarah again, he asserts that he just wanted to move on, and he doesn't believe what her wife said after the timer went off. However, Katie and Iris are tired of him, so they ask him to go home. Later, while Iris is sitting alone and drinking, she suddenly sees a vision of her late father. She then witnesses a scenario of when Owen had used Baghead to meet his late wife, and he apologized to her for abandoning her and Iris. For 20 years, he had been stuck here, unable to reunite with his family, and wherever he was about to go see Iris, sickness and death seemed to follow him. He finally decided to burn the property down, so that Iris wouldn't have to deal with the misery. However, after two minutes had passed, Baghead took control of his wife's spirit, and ended up burning him instead. The scene then shifts to midnight when Iris suddenly hears some noises. She realizes that Katie is not in her bedroom, so she follows the sound and enters the basement. But instead of Katie, she finds her father, who tries to lure her into the big wall hole. However, Iris refuses to go, and notices that her dad's face has become deranged. Then, Owen takes off his skin, and reveals himself to be Baghead. Iris tries to strangle her, but it backfires. Baghead turns out to be herself, and Iris wakes up in her bed, feeling a rope with a key tightly wrapped around her neck. Fortunately, Katie hears her screams, and cuts the rope, saving Iris from almost choking to death. In the afternoon, the girls try to reach out to the solicitor, so that they can remove Iris's name from the deed, but he seems to have vanished into thin air. Upon returning home, Katie worries for her friend's safety, and urges her to leave the place immediately. However, Iris doesn't want to go back to her ordinary life where she doesn't have anything. She accuses Katie of being jealous now that she has her own property, and the upset Katie eventually packs her belongings and leaves the house. Despite the fight, Katie is still concerned for her best friend, so she heads to Otto's abandoned house. Inside, she finds a series of documents that prove how desperately he was trying to escape from the curse. Meanwhile, Iris goes to the basement, and uses Baghead to meet her father. Here, he reveals that he wanted the pub to burn down, didn't even leave a will and didn't want her involved. Iris gets angry at him for holding on to all these secrets for so long, but he couldn't leave this place to meet her earlier. He asks for forgiveness, pleading with her not to bring him back again. Following this, a frustrated Iris returns upstairs, where she tries to burn down the deed papers. But no matter how much she tries, the paper does not catch fire. She then realizes that she is trapped here after making a wrong decision. A while later, Katie returns to the pub and tries calling Iris repeatedly, but gets no answer. This is because she is lying unconscious in one of the rooms. Assuming her friend is in the basement, Katie goes there, only to come across Baghead, and she drops her belongings, and Baghead swallows some documents that belong to Otto. As a result, Otto ends up coming to life. Katie then questions him about who Baghead is. So he reveals that 400 years ago, a cult named the Brotherhood discovered a woman who could summon dead people. They tried to abuse her power, but when she refused, they branded her a witch, and burned her at the stake. However, she rose from the dead and sought revenge. When she started killing a lot of people, the Brotherhood imprisoned her in an underground tomb through a dark ritual. But centuries later, descendants of those people open her tomb to abuse her power once again. The more they used her, the more power she gained, and those who tried to exploit her ended up dead. While Katie is listening to this story, the two minutes run out, and Otto's spirit is taken over by Baghead. And as soon as Katie tries to leave, the, 
The following morning, Iris wakes up to a call from Katie, who pleads for help from the basement. She gets scared, and immediately rushes to help her friend at the basement. Iris hears her voice coming from beyond the big hole. Despite her father's warning to stay away from the hole, she enters the wall to save Katie. Inside, she finds a deep cave, and continues walking through it, and eventually finds her friend. But as they try to return, Iris notices the dead body of the real Katie. Turns out the person behind her is none other than Baghead. The creature then tries to attack her, but Iris quickly gets up and escapes through the wall opening. Fortunately, Neil shows up at that moment, and he takes her away from there. When they get upstairs, Neil gives her some pills, claiming they will help her calm down. She then consumes them, and reminds Neil that no one will use Baghead again, so she'll be powerless. Suddenly, she begins to feel dizzy and, seeing this, Neil asks her to rest for a while. In the next scene, Iris wakes up, and realizes that it is already dark. She then rushes to the basement and hears Neil talking to someone. There, she discovers Neil making a deal with Baghead. He proposes to be the creature's guardian and, in exchange, he wants to stay in touch with his wife for the rest of his life. Neil even writes his own name on the deed paper, but it disappears again because Iris is still alive. Soon, Baghead impersonates Sarah, and tells him she was pregnant when she died. Neil was too controlling and insecure, so Sarah was afraid and wanted to leave him. He even sneakily drugged her to calm her down, but she ran to her car, and eventually got into the car crash. Consumed by guilt, he begins to cry, so Sarah tells him that they can still be together, but they can't if Iris is still alive. Neil asserts that he is not a murderer, but Sarah replies that he was the one who killed her and their son. Just then, Neil notices Iris overhearing their conversation, so he chases after her. She rushes to her room and attempts to call the cops, but finds her phone is out of battery. She then runs to the roof in panic, but Neil catches up to her. Iris tries to reason with him, explaining that the woman he was talking to is not his wife, and that Baghead is manipulating him. However, he refuses to listen and violently attacks her. Iris manages to break free, and tries to descend to the ground floor, but... <coughs> Neil throws her off the roof, resulting in her tragic demise. Following this, Neil carries her lifeless body to the basement, and gives Baghead her phone to bring her back so she can put his name on the deed. Baghead swallows the phone, and soon Iris's spirit appears. Neil apologizes for killing her, and says he just wanted to become the guardian of Baghead and reunite with his wife. He then asks the spirit to transfer ownership of the house to him. However, she maniacally thanks Neil for releasing her. She claims that although Iris is dead, her name is still on the deed. So, with Iris' soul in Baghead's body, she becomes her own guardian, and is free to leave the basement. Neil doesn't understand, but she suddenly begins attacking him. Baghead transforms into Neil's mother and breaks his hands. She then takes the form of Sarah, and hits his head repeatedly on the ground. Eventually, she takes the form of Iris, who grabs a chair and smacks him, leading to his death. In the final scene, Baghead burns down the deed along with the pub, and walks away from the basement. With no one left to control her or trap her, she is now her own guardian and free to roam around the world. Okay guys, thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.